Hello, welcome to Mondo Market TV. This is the Hourglass with Jody McCraney fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so, today we are doing stainless steel ribbon molds, which are so fun. I just adore them. <laughs> They're so snazzy. <laughs> so, we have a fantastic kit, we have a fun giveaway, and we are ready to go. Do you want to, do I want to talk? Oh. I always forget. Can I get a countdown, please? Woo! I'm not allowed to talk until that thing gets turned over. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're such a toad. What are we doing? We're doing stainless steel ribbon molds. Stainless steel ribbon molds. Woohoo! What do we want to start with? Let's, can we just make a mold? Can I make a mold? Can I make a mold? <laughs> First of all, I'm going to tell you all about this fantastic giveaway that we're doing today. What are we giving away today? We are giving away the mold to make this star shape right here. So we'll be giving, we'll Look be giving the stainless, oh, a stainless steel mold to make this. Here, let's put this right, right here, here. Sure. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, it's adorable. Oh, I love it. And, but how do people qualify for that? Well, in order to get entered into our super snazzy giveaway, you have to comment, share, and what else? I think you get extra points if you buy the kit. I think you do get extra I points. I think we're giving extra kit. points for that. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> so, if you share this fantastic stream with any of your loved ones, you can write the URL down on a letter and type to a pigeon if you'd like. Or you can just send it to them through Facebook or email or whatever and then tell us that you shared it, then you will be automatically entered to win the mold for that fantastic star. So you can make your own in a variety of beautiful colors. And if you comment telling us all about, what, what about? What? Tell us, uh, oh, um, we don't know yet. Well, if you comment. <laughs> Send us a, a pet joke. Oh yes, send we us a pet, pet joke. jokes. We do love pets yes. and jokes. So if you comment sending us questions or pet jokes, please, um, then you will be automatically entered to win the mold for that. So. Okay, we ready? Yes, we okay, are. Okay, let's do it. Hey, Logan. What? Where do cows go on dates? Oh, no. Do I, do I have to answer? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The movies. <laughs> I love that joke. Okay, so today we're working with stainless steel ribbon molds, and we call them that because they are made with these skinny uh, ribbons of stainless steel. And um, the first thing you should always remember about stainless steel is the edges can be really sharp because that's you know also what knives are made out of. So I'm going to put some of these little gloves on because I prefer my skin to be in one piece. <laughs> Um, so the stainless steel ribbon molds, the idea here is that you can make any kind of custom shape for uh, a quarter inch to three quarter inch glass, thick glass, and um, you can do some fusing with that. And, and I'll show you some examples. So the first thing you should think of is like a cookie cutter, right? And you, you fill it with glass and then you fuse it or tack fuse it. I like to tack fuse it and it makes a shape, which is awesome. And I brought one to show you. Um, so you can see how that works. So I'm going to actually put it right here on my mat. Okay, so here is, a, this is a, a snowflake cookie cutter, right? Isn't that pretty? And this is one that I have put in my kiln and I lined it with uh, fiber paper, not fiber paper, shelf paper. And then I filled it with tempered glass chunks and I tack fused it. And ta-da! But look at this guy. I mean, this is oh, like... Oh, so crumbly. Right, so... <laughs> when I first saw that, I thought it was paint, but it's actually the it's metal. It's actually the metal. So the problem with using a cookie cutter is it is... It's, it's a one-time use only. It, well, and not just a one-time use. The metal gets... I mean, you can see that I've gotten the metal has stuck to some of my glass piece. So, mm. so we're... That's not... Awesome. Better than your thumb. <laughs> better than my thumb. So we're, we're using this stainless steel ribbon to make a better mold than this, right? Even though this is actually pretty cool and we could, we'll make a, something similar to that. Oh, um, look at how pretty that is. We love that, but this is why um, 
we're learning to make our own. Okay, so we have two different thicknesses of stainless steel ribbon, two widths, I guess. They're the same thickness, but they're two widths. So this is a three quarter inch right here, and this is a one half inch. And each, meow, yes. Bree says, why did the snowman name his dog Frost? <laughs> why? I don't know. She hasn't sent in an uh, answer look, yet. Bree, you gotta send the Please. answer. Come on. Oh, now I'll have to guess. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know. It's okay. because frostbite. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's Is terrible. Is that right? Please tell me that's right. And hysterical at the right. same time. I love it. Okay, so you have one long skinny piece of stainless steel ribbon in either width. And, um, but you have to somehow join that together. And you know from experience and from classes and everything else that when you're firing glass, you usually you fire into ceramic and over stainless steel because stainless steel contracts more than glass does. So what we need to do is make some sort of expansion type joint so that we can Fi we can fire inside of the stainless steel without it grabbing our glass and breaking it or cracking it or something like that. And so what I've done, and you can see this one right here. Um, this is an example of an expansion joint that you can make. I don't know, Logan, if you want to show this one on your close-up. Sure. Go okay. Um, and you can see it is a little, it's like a folded over bit and then another bit that hooks into it, right? And so, so what- you can see that it does Right there, that. yeah. So what happens is when we put those on the outside, because we're putting the glass on the inside, um, and when it fuses, it, the joint will actually sort of expand a little bit so that it doesn't grab your glass. And I'll show you how to make one of those. So the first thing we do is we bend uh, about a half inch we're going to do the shiny side in towards our glass and we bend at a right angle. Now, if you're having trouble keeping your pliers at a right angle, sometimes it helps to use square pliers so you can actually line up that front jaw so you get a nice square. It does need to be a square bend because otherwise it will not work super well. So we make an L shape like this and then we, we go halfway up and we bend it over again. Back down on itself. Okay, hit me. Okay, so um, we have several comments. Okay. First of all, hi all, wonder if Jody cut the shelf paper herself. Did you cut the shelf paper I yourself? I did cut the shelf paper That's myself. so fun. <laughs> it comes in the kit, fun fact. It does, so you get... Um, How much do you get? You get... When you get 10 feet of the half inch wide stainless ribbon and mm -hmm. 10 feet of the three quarter inch wide stainless ribbon and 20 feet of the one inch wide shelf paper. Wow. To go inside of them. That's so cool. So you two can have Jody cut shelf paper. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be good for something, man. Right. Uh, Wilma says, hi, watching in Arizona, shared on Facebook. Awesome. Thank you. And I did this backwards. All right. Yeah. And That's Bree okay. asks, why are dogs like phones? Why are dogs like phones? They have caller ID. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so That's bad. That's sad how long it took me to get that too. <laughs> um, what did the, so this is from Jana. What okay. did the duck say when he bought lipstick? I am getting none of these today. I don't know what. Put it on my bill. Oh, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Terry Love, I received my magnet and ornament today. They are so adorable. I love this art form. Thanks so much. Good. You, you won last time. That's so great. Yeah, that's I'm so awesome. I'm glad they got you. And then Sheila says, hi from the UK. Hi, Sheila. Hey, Sheila. Okay, so now we've made that little, that little guy. And I've Do cut. You show it on close up? Oh, sure, if you want. And I cut a piece, I cut it. Oh, and I didn't show you how I cut it. Oh, I should, okay. I'll show you how I cut it. So it's just folded over, you can see where. Yep, fold it over with a L-shaped. And my stainless steel is kind of grubby. I use mine for all sorts of things. Yours is brand new though. Yeah. Which Super is kind of awesome. Okay, so then we need to, all, on the other end, we bend like a quarter inch L-shaped bend like this. And this 
is going to tuck right inside of there. And you want it to be tight, but not so tight. Okay. And then you can see you can adjust the, wow. the size of this. Okay, so then we have, ta-da! We have a stainless steel ribbon mold. Ta-da! But what that do you, easy, folks. It's that easy. But, so it's round, obviously. <laughs> um, and you can see what happens when you, this is my uh, round piece of glass. And, yet yeah, one sec. And there's the round mold for it. You can see that was a pretty tight fit. So the reason that we line that with shelf paper is because um, we need to keep the glass from sticking to the stainless steel. And because the glass and the stainless steel are both gonna be moving a little bit because we put chunks of glass in there and the stainless contracts a little bit, I like to put shelf paper in there rather than kiln wash or spray so that the paper kind of gives it a little buffer in between what's happening with the glass and what's happening with the metal. So, but then you may say, what if I don't want a circle? Um, but you, Ooh. right, Ooh. So I don't want a circle. Ooh. So you can easily make other shapes with this and you can do it just by um, making bins in it. Uh-oh, okay. Jan Harris Miss, what is a dog's favorite chair? A lazy boy? A barco lounger. Oh, a barco lounger. <laughs> I and was closer. <laughs> a guest 689 asks, what gauge is the steel? Um, you know what? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I think it is somewhere around a 20 or a, it's somewhere between 18 and 22. But, and I, it comes in a millimeter measurement rather than a gauge. So that's why I don't know for sure. Um, but we will add that to the product page as soon as we, as soon as I look it up. Okay, so now here's an example of, I'm making these L-shaped folds and I'm twisting, right? This, this takes a little finagling, just like anything finagling else. Finagling is a great word. Finagling is a good word. It's sort of like a, fidgety bit. A fidgety bit is a piece oh. of hardware, <laughs> particularly from the big Swedish store. The big that, blue Swedish store. That you have to have to put together. We were putting together a dress the other day. And it and had a lot of fiddly bits. Yes. It was a fun time. <laughs> Speaking of fidgety bits, are there any loose tiny chunks in this kit that we should be aware of? No. Awesome. Even better. There are not. This kit is very straightforward and it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So even if you're like a beginner at glass, you can you can do this, right? So this is probably um, I'm not sure it's beginner. Like if you've never done any kind of glass before, ever, 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 you'll be able to do this. But you may have some questions, and of course, we're always available for that. Mm -hmm. If you've had any kind, even like just a beginning fusing class, this should be no problem for you. Awesome. All right. So now I can. We'll see what we can make here. Nothing very cool. Wow. Okay, my adventure without a pattern is uh, an adventure. Okay, we're going to make a four-pointed <laughs> star for holiday ornaments. Did I tell you that this is excellent for holiday ornaments? It is excellent it for is holiday ornaments. It is excellent. We, have ornaments. we do. And so let's look at it. So let's, let's look at the icicle first. All right, let's look at the icicle first. Because it's a pretty basic That's kind of thing. Fun. And you see it has a little hole in it, right? right so, so you, you can, can hang it. put a ribbon in it. Aww, and do you see pretty. the do you see the mold we made the icicle with right there? Looks like uh, a big spike. Yep, this Okay. One. Yep. So what you do with that guy is you line him with paper mm -hmm. and then you put a piece of chalk in it to keep that hole oh. when, and then you fill around it with um, with broken tempered glass okay so here's another one we just made like boom just like that um, but you can also if you decide that you don't want a circle you can after you've fired this so this one has now been fired twice mm -hmm. and you can um, 
you can change the shape of it, right? So you, if you decided maybe you wanted a heart Aww, instead cute. of a, a circle. So these are super versatile because you can you can move them around. Now, of course, they can't be uh, yeah. infinitely remolded because of course they are metal and metal breaks eventually but you can do all kinds of things with it okay so there's a, a swishy heart okay so right. sheila sends in okay. do you use your rubbish cookie cutter as a pattern yes you could That's use your, <laughs> your rubbish cookie cutter i love it <laughs> Oh, also. Yes, you could, although I would not necessarily make cookie cutters out of your ribbon molds because, mm -mm -mm. yeah. Okay. That added an interesting flavor. Jana also says, what do you call a rabbit that has fleas? Bugs Bunny. Oh, <laughs> I was like, hoppy. Hoppy. <laughs> right? Bugs Bunny is a good Sheila one. Sheila says, I have a load of tempered glass chips from the sunroof of my friend's BMW that suddenly broke on top of me. <gasps> oh, is he okay? Scary. <laughs> right? That would have been <laughs> something. Something. All right. So let's, speaking of tempered glass, let's look at some tempered glass. Woo. So tempered glass is... Um, Oh shoot, also called safety glass, um, but it's a little bit different. It's technically it's a little bit different, but a lot of people um, use both of those phrases and that's fine. You just need to know what you're looking at. So tempered glass, I'm gonna let you show this one, Logan, and maybe if you show it against this black background, it will show up better. Um, See that little thing right there? Yep. So tempered glass often has a little that's tattoo a on it where ah, yes, it yes, has yes. yes it has a little tattoo on it and it says tempered right on it mm -hmm. so now you know it's tempered now tempering is actually a uh, part of the annealing process and what happens is the glass manufacturers cut it or whoever cuts it to the size you need it they finish the edges and then they temper it and how they temper it is they heat it just above annealing and then they crash cool it this is all computerized this is not something you can do at home they crash cool it and purposefully uh, create a lot of tension in the glass which is kind of funny because as glass artists we try really hard to not create tension in glass when it's annealing but they do it on purpose and what happens is have you tried doing it at home no but what happens is when you break it, um, it breaks into tiny little pieces. But it, sometimes tempered glass doesn't have a marking on it. So how do you tell if it's actually tempered? Oh, and then so, we have polarized film. Yes, and you can box. look at it with your polarized film. And oh, wow. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But so this halo undistinct. that you're seeing right here, it's very distinct, particularly on the corners. Particularly on camera, too. Look at that. Right? So you should have no trouble figuring out if, it is, if it's tempered. And if you are in the thrift store and you're not sure if something is tempered, I have little squares of, t of polarized film, <laughs> and I put them on top of my cell phone as a light box. It works great. It's very discreet, okay? People look at you like you're a weirdo, but it is pretty awesome. Right. So that's two ways that you can tell it's tempered, either by the tattoo on the glass or you can look at it with polarized film and see the stress inside. Bree says, love the icicle. Isn't it fun? So I love it too. I'm going to make a whole bunch of those, except, so I was thinking I would make a whole bunch for my Christmas tree and then my brother reminded me that I have a lot of cats. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I have, I've put my tempered glass in a piece of plastic. Ooh. This is oh, rubbish we're gonna plastic. We're going to do it. it okay. Yes, we are. Oh, we're going to use the semi-automatic. Yes. Yay. Can I do it? Yes. Awesome. Just give me a second. So what we're doing is we're actually, I'm going to show, Logan is going to show you how to break tempered glass. We clean it first. Mm -hmm. And then we put it in some sort of thing. A plastic bag works great. Wrapping it up in paper works great. Make sure you put it in something. Because, so we don't have exploded glass. Everywhere. Right. We're, what we're going to do is use this. It's called a spring-loaded center punch. And it's for setting nails. You can get it at the hardware store. It's kind of scary. I love it. And... Uh, it, it has a lot of force and it punches right into the glass. It focuses all the force on the tip. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will use this glass to fill a mold with. So, okay, Let's go. See. So, so pr just press it, press it on the glass. Really hard. 
like just that. like that and okay. now it's full broken glass yep. so fun so let's look it's a, it is fun actually i get a kick out of this but we've released wow. quite a lot of pressure Look inside that. that glass. It looks like a spider web. That's so pretty. Right? Okay. And you can see right where our impact point was, and it breaks mm -hmm. out from there. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's called safety glass, also the other name for it, is because it breaks into these tiny pieces instead of breaking into big, long, stabby shards. Ooh, like if Sheila's bad. friend's sunroof had have broken into big, stabby bits, there would mm -hmm. be blood. But these are <laughs> these, however, are still sharp. So yeah. do be careful. Don't let it fool you that it's safe because it's safety glass. It's <laughs> still glass. Okay, and then we just do this. All right. Shake it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see that it has big pieces like this. You can break them. This way, you can also just um, whack it a little. Whack it a little, right, to get those pieces smaller. Now, here's an interesting thing, though. Um, and this is this is just total trivia, but I love it. So I'm going to show you anyway. If we look, if we take a piece of that broken tempered glass and we put one. it, sure, put it back on the, this is quarter inch thick, by the way. Wow. Um, can you see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it still has a lot of tension. Even though we've wow. released a lot of that tension, all of those individual pieces of glass still have a lot of tension in them because they're still not annealed, right? We, they're still, mm -hmm. okay. So tempered glass typically comes in the same thicknesses that window glass comes in. So either, oh no, all right, hit me. Guest 87 says, that is so cool. Isn't it? Isn't it? This you kit, will dig this. <laughs> this kit is so cool. It's got all of this, um, stainless steel ribbon it's got enough that you can do how many molds Jody? um well it, a little bit of it will depend on how big your mold is so um we'll look at a great big one in this blue do thing. you want you want to show them the the flower here so this is okay so this noodly this, mold. yeah this is a very large noodly mold but this took nine feet yep so and you get 20 feet which yes. is so cool it's also perfect for smaller kilns if you want to do small things like this icicle or is this a also a Yeah, we're going to do that one here in just a second. Snazzy. Yes. So if you want to do any of these super fun smaller ornaments, it's perfect for small kilns and beginners and it's just such a fun project. And you can do so many things, especially as soon as I put gloves on my face itches. It never fails. But I'm you not can do itching your face for you. No, you can do all <laughs> kinds of ornaments and things. So yes, if you, you can sell do your custom work. presents too, like for your friends and family, you can make them little pretty things, <laughs> inside jokes, whatever. <laughs> and what what kind of glass can you use with these, Jody? I am glad you asked that because we are using tempered glass in here today, but you the reason that I even started this whole process is my glass friend Karen emailed me and she had a question about um, a potential pro project pro with a that had a million jillion ornaments that she wanted to make. And she is using her scrap art glass. So you could wow. totally use this for your scrap art glass if you, you wanted make, to. You can make pretty rainbow colored little ornaments. Right? That's so fun. Yes, and it actually is a really great use to, to use up your art glass because. Right, and it's at a pretty and darn good price for right getting all of this awesome use and projects and ideas and fun <laughs> things. You can do custom um, ornaments, custom ornaments, custom patterns. It also comes with some of these patterns, doesn't it? Uh, we do, yes, we do have a couple of patterns in there That's so that so you cool. can follow along on the, the heart and the star and things like that. Okay, mm -hmm. can we look at glass now? Because, you know, that, that stuff's all good, but glass One is... One more thing. Okay. This is our <laughs> launch price, $49 plus shipping, and we only have that price for 24 hours. After that, it, it'll be more. expensive. So... And the um, shipping is not terrible, because it fits in a small flat rate box. Yeah, so that's pretty darn good. Okay, let's look at some different kinds of glass here. Let's move this. All right. So... Here are three different thicknesses of tempered glass. We have this one here on the end is a 3 8 inch thick. The one we just broke is a quarter inch thick. 
Let's see if I can get it to balance there. Bree says, Pretty close. Jody is so full of info. <laughs> I'm yes. full of something for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then Rick from uh, Colorado, I believe, asks, how long is the sale for the shelf paper and the ribbon going to last? 24 hours. So. Okay. By tomorrow after this. So think about so. doing that real soon. And we do have a limited supply of them also. That's so. true. Okay. So here we have three different thicknesses of tempered glass. You can see an eighth inch, a quarter inch, and three eighths inch. And I want you to just look here for a second at the way, the different way that they they huh? broke, because I think it's so fascinating. That is so this is the eighth. This is the three eighths. Look at how small those little individual cells are. Yeah. And this is the quarter. So, but let's look at what it looks like after we cook it, because Ooh. we got to know this kind of stuff, right? Okay. So let's look at. Um, guest 550 asks, can you use window glass in the mold? You this can, is okay. window glass. This is yes. window glass. This is Yay. window glass. Um, the one that we just broke was a shelf, but the others are windows. So the 1 8 inch, this was a, a screen door um, window. Mm -hmm. So that definitely windows. Shower doors or uh, that kind of thing are a quarter of an inch thick. So that would be the one like the same thickness as we just broke. And this one... Um, typically you, if you get a window this thick, it's a commercial grade window, like a big yeah. picture window, but you see a lot of tabletops that are that thick. So, okay. And then, let me ask you, let me ask you those questions. <laughs> Stephanie asks, what is the original purpose of the steel ribbon? Found some here in Germany, but it looks like it can't be folded as it behaves similar to spring steel. Mm. Um, it can be a lot of things. So, um you can cut your own if you can find some sheet stainless steel so let me answer this question for you after the show and what will if you could um just make sure that you send your email to us i will be happy to help you figure out what that is the steel that's in germany will help you figure out what that is okay because it is going to be difficult for me to answer it for you right this minute so can we now can i look at some glass Fine. Okay, let's let's look at some different thicknesses um, when we uh, tack fuse them, just so you get an idea of sort of if they're different or you know what you want to use. So this one here, these are the same mold, but this one on the right is the eighth inch thick, and this one on the left is the quarter inch thick. And I don't well, they look very similar. Right, but they're they're both really sparkly. So these are tack fused, which means that we fuse them, um, and we bring the top temperature down about a hundred degrees cooler than a full fuse. And I don't know, can you show a do you want a black background on this so we can show what happens is the the edges round. Mm -hmm. So you might you will still get some little sharp edges on here wow that's but you pretty. can see that they round quite a bit when you when you tack fuse them mm -hmm. it's so very sparkly and pretty. it is very sparkly and pretty okay so let's look at what happened how you load a mold and then we're going to look at two-part molds okay so i have a shelf here which has nothing to do with the point but i have to say i bought this kiln shelf at the thrift store for a dollar fifty i know because it's awesome. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, I do love my thrift shopping. So once you have your mold, and what you need to do here is make sure that that um, join is firmly closed. So it will, it will spread open during firing. So if you're doing this multiple times, just give it a little pinch there, a little squish, a little squish so it stays shut firmly. And Ooh. then you can take your... Um, some nazi shelf your paper snazzy ribbon. shelf paper and you just uh if if you are having a hard time getting it to stay in place you can glue it to your stainless steel form just use little drops of glue i use the school glue with the orange <laughs> cap. orange cap i think it's got a cow on it yep just use it a little bit um and then you um cut this with scissors or if, in case you forgot your scissors you can just rip it 
-huh. Okay, so see how those the paper overlaps right there? Mm -hmm. You want to give it about a half an inch overlap so that if, w as everything is expanding and contracting, it um, you don't get the, a gap because your glass will stick to that. So, and then if you have it on your shelf here, and you can see maybe from the side that my mold is maybe not perfectly flat, it's pretty flat. But as long as your paper is perfectly flat to the shelf, it's okay if your mold has a tiny, see like right here, there's just a tiny little gap. It's okay if you have a tiny little gap, as long as your, your paper is all the way to the shelf, because it will, it will hold it. Okay. And then wow, after, we fire this, what you can do is um, you can slump the, the flat around, like the circle and the star, you can slump them if you like into shape. So you could have a little star dish or a little soap holder or something. Soap, maybe not so much because you get soap down into the little gaps, but these make really beautiful jewelry holders. That okay. is true. So this is what it looks like, and you get really random shapes. This is what it looks like, like, like before you cook it, before you tack mm -hmm. fuse it, and this is what it looks like after you tack fuse it. And this one is actually the 3 8 inch chunks because I wanted you to show you one of each size. So this is what it looks like when you take it out of the kiln. And you can see there is a little bit of oxidation, just like the cookie cutter had. Do you see how there's a little bit right here? It's nowhere near as much. It's nowhere though. near as much. And that usually is just the very first time you fire it, you'll get, and what that is typically is it's the coating from manufacturing usually. Um, in steel manufacturing, machines are oiled or whatever, so you have a little bit of, a little bit of residue there. And then you have your star. Fish. Wow. Right, and this is so if we could compare that one and this one, there's one is a three quarter, or is a three eighths inch thick, and one is a, um, a quarter inch thick. Wow. So you get a, a different, slightly so different big. look. Right? It's so sparkly. So sparkly. We do love sparkly things. Right. right. <laughs> I'm yes, not sure which one I just do. handed back to you, so. Um, this is the quarter inch one, and this is the three eighths inch one. And if you're not sure, you can just look at the size of the chunks, because you can see that uh, there. Yeah. Sure. So sometimes you do get a little sharp bit, and you can just um, either nip that off with your grocery pliers, or what I do is take a diamond file and just knock the burrs down just a little bit, so that no one gets hurt when they're... No one gets wounded when they're... No one gets wounded when they're doing that. Pretty thing. Okay, you ready for the next round of molds? First, first, let's talk about how <laughs> snazzy this kid is. I keep saying snazzy. I do know what it means. I'm just using it in the wrong context. It's, it is a pretty snazzy, like, right? by it the is. actual definition. <laughs> So, this kit, it contains the two different sizes of steel um, ribbon, as well as the kiln paper, the shelf paper. You can use any kind of glass you'd like, such as window glass, art glass, everything. This, this one is bottle glass. This one is bottle glass. That's so pretty. It's right? so blue. Here, See how big and blue that is? Oof. <laughs> It's wow. big and sparkly and blue. Isn't that crazy? Yes. So this is uh, vo blue vodka bottles, and they are mixed, but it's a very consistent brand, so I'm very uh, confident <laughs> in that one. Yeah, so this amazing kit, you can make a whole heap of different designs with them, whether they're from the patterns that are included in the uh, kit. There, that's what the word is. <laughs> whether they're included in the kit or you come up with them yourself, which is pretty darn cool, then you can make a whole bunch of them. And if you really, really hate it, really hate the design that you've come up with, you can always reshape it into something else, which is phenomenal, really. And they're like very reusable. You can use them again and again, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Also, there's right. a giveaway. 
There is a giveaway. Oh, and that's and this is what we're giving away too. Is this it's, little star mold right here? Yep, it's the little star mold, so that you can make a, just. Okay. okay. It just has little bits of glass on. It. I don't want to hand it to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whatever. So we're giving <laughs> that away. You can enter by sharing this stream. Wow. <laughs> Yay! So pretty. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. Yay. So we're giving this away. You can enter by sharing the stream, commenting whether you send us in more pet jokes, which we do appreciate, or sending your questions, comments, whatever. Send them all in, and you will be entered to win this magnificent little star mold. And now you can look at glass. <laughs> awesome. So let's look at um, a two-part mold, which is a little bit more complicated, but also very, very cool. So here is um, an example of, this is a two-part mold. And when I say two-part, I mean an outside part and an inside part with a void. So just think about for a second, um, if you have like a heart shape and you wanted to put another heart shape in the center, which would be amazing. You could do circles in circles for a really like retro mod thing, but you do have a little thing you need to keep in mind. Okay, so here's the outside mold and it's made just the way we've made them before. Um, but I do wanna talk for a second about where to put your seam, right? Where to put that joint. See how we have that right here? So oh, because the inside one has a joint too. The inside one has a joint too, but it's also better to put that joint on a flat side of the mold so that, um, or a corner. One or, well, obviously those are the only two choices. <laughs> An inside corner is not a good idea. An outside corner. So you can see this one, I put it on the flat side here. This one is on the top. This one is on a flat side. So that way, um, if it were on this inside corner, it would have a harder time expanding when it fires. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit of planning on your, your part. So this particular one, I've made the, the mold as a teardrop shape, right? And this could be any size. Here's one of our circles and we could easily just make it into a giant teardrop shape. Just like that. But now we need to make that um, inside mold. And we still need an expansion joint. Yes. <laughs> that was a strange noise. <laughs> I, I messed it up. <laughs> Jenny says, hi, Jody. Hey, Jenny. And then Sandra asks, are they fired in a kiln? Yes, yes they are and fired in a kiln. You can do them small, so you can put them in small kilns, which is phenomenal. Right? or you can do great big ones. Okay, big ones. so we looked at one sort of expansion joint already, Woo. and this is a, the other kind of expansion joint. And what you do here is, I think I should probably just make one, because okay. this one doesn't want to come back apart. <laughs> but oh, you can see that it slides, nice. right? Yep. Okay, so we start by, and I forgot to show you how you cut this earlier. Oh, so, tin snips. Yes, you cut this using your tin snips, and we want to cut about a, mm, a piece that is about twice as long as the strip is wide. But it doesn't have to be like super scientific or anything. And this just cuts just like that. And then we're going to cut it down the center to make a thin strip. Ooh. Flanged. <laughs> you could also make it into thirds if you wanted to. You could cut them into cut it into thirds, um, and then we need to make the inside piece for um, our teardrop. So this one has this little one has a, a smaller teardrop there, but I'm going to make an, a bigger teardrop that goes inside of our big one here. And again, we will now keep in mind we. Um, the glass is going to be on the outside of this mold, so it's going to squeeze it this way, and then, okay. Guest 976 asks, do you have to, sh do you have to save one kiln shelf so that um, other glass is not 
sustained in future non-metal projects? No, I That's don't. A good question. It is a good question, and usually, if you're using silver, you do. But this is stainless steel, so I use shelf paper, and I also kiln wash my shelf and that should provide enough protection. And stainless steel should not stain your shelves anyway. There's, it's inert enough. It doesn't react to the level of heat. Okay, so that looks about the right size, but we still have this sticky up thing right here. So that's where, this is where our little um, fidgety bit. Fidgety bit, <laughs> yes, okay. And we're going to make a, a right angle bend at one end. Guess 315 ounces. Sure what are the different sizes of stainless steel ribbon included in this kit? We have uh, 10 feet of half inch wide and 10 feet of three quarter inch wide. So you get two different widths of stainless steel and I'll show you the difference. So this is a half inch right here and this is a three quarter inch right here. So you get an idea of, and the reason that there's two is when you're making, like if you wanted to make um, one of these snowflake shapes like this, you'd want to use a half inch because the three quarters inch is hard to, it's, sti it is stiffer because it's wider. It's hard to make the little tiny square or the little tiny bends in it. So I like to use the three quarter inch for bigger shapes like this guy. It's very large. It is very large, and I use the half inch for smaller shapes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even fit in the camera. It doesn't even fit. Okay, we'll do it like this. See? Huh. Wow. <laughs> Ta da! We are very clever. Okay. All right. Page S says, I love the family aspect of Curious Mondo <laughs> and Mondo Market. <laughs> right? Yeah. It is definitely a family operation around here. Woo! Okay, so here's my seam. And here's my little clip, and that's exactly what I'm doing with it, is I'm making a clip. I'm gonna fold it right over this seat. So now I've covered my seam with a piece of the clip, and then I make another clip. Okay, so now what I've done is I've made an expansion seam that doesn't stick out. And so what I can do with that guy is put it right inside of there, and if I wanted to get really tricky, I could do well, I couldn't I, because they'd have to be connected, but <laughs> you do it like this. And then to fill that particular mold, let's fetch hither our kiln shelf. Woo, woo. Okay. Your thrift store kiln shelf? My thrift store kiln shelf. Happy dance. <laughs> Sometimes the thrift store doesn't know what they have, which is awesome. <laughs> so. Didn't you get like a, a grinder? I did. I got a stained glass grinder for $5. And you can bet everybody looked at me because I shrieked and then danced. I was there. Can confirm. Yes. <laughs> there, was, there was definitely shrieking and dancing. I was okay. very confused, but I'm glad you found it. Right? Little you're, coin. you're glad that it worked out for me. Yeah. So you line the outside one, and then we're going to line the inside one. And I like to do it like this. Hmm? It's much easier to do it if it's not inside there. Yeah, so don't don't pour the glass. <laughs> right, not yet. Don't pour the glass yet. Okay. And then again, um, if you're having trouble keeping it, Stop. you can always glue it. Paige says, Jody, how much glass does it take to fill that giant flower shape you showed earlier? It's huge. Um, oh, I didn't. This one. I didn't weigh it, but it does. Let me let me. It's see. pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. So it's probably. Heavy. I'm gonna say four, four and a half pounds, maybe. Does that feel as heavy as the cat? This ick. It's a little heavier. It's more like Clara. Might so six it's, pounds. <laughs> right, might just be because like the density is more concentrated than the tiny cranky cat. Than the tiny cranky cat. She's adorable, but man, she is tiny and cranky. Okay, so we're gonna. Woo! So what I'm doing here is. I'm, well, let's not You're do it the there. Glass who's boss. <laughs> I'm showing the glass who's boss. I'm breaking the three eighths inch into the individual little bits. So see, you can see it there. So then, Woo. OK. 
Okay, this part is fidgety. This is a fidgety bit. This is a fidgety bit. Okay. And then we just fill, I'm filling where the seam is so that it will hold it in place. That's a good plan. Right from the outset, okay. And this I like to do actually with tweezers, but. Um, if we don't have tweezers. I didn't. However, we right. do have an icicle if you would like to try and. To try and poke the glass down there with. So the reason that I would do it with tweezers is to make sure that I got um, glass all the way down in all those tiny little pieces. Because after all that, you don't want, a, and that one has a GAC on it. GAC is the technical term for unknown stuff. Thing is the thing. Yeah, yeah. dirt bits. Dirt bits. <laughs> right. Bree sends in, which dog breed does Dracula love the most? Bloodhound. Yeah. <laughs> I finally got one. I'm so proud. I have glass all over my hands. <laughs> right? Oh, um, Sheila sends in, why didn't the dog star laugh at the joke? This is really funny. Uh, he was too serious. Oh, that's a nerd joke. That's I love serious. it. <laughs> Jen will rate. You can maybe use a little piece of tape. Um, Ooh, tape is not the very best thing to fire. Um, I learned from my own smelly experience that Ooh. masking tape and packing tape both make a terrible smell. So, so glue is, is, yeah, paper also. So glue is a better, is slightly better because it doesn't burn off as much. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do we think about that? Now, this would be, so this is what it looks like after it's been fired. Wow. So there you go. Yay. Yep. So pretty. Okay, so that, I like that a lot. And then, yeah, of course, sure. the icicles as well. There's an icicle as well. Woo. Right. Okay. Yay. So what do we have to tell these nice people? Oh, well... We're running out of time on our hourglass. Oh, we're not running out of time yet. We oh, still have to do a big piece, a big oh, shape. Goodness. Okay. So let's talk about the kit again. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the kit it's again. It's a pretty darn cool kit. Well, it is a cool kit. It's a cool kit. So, how thick is this kiln shelf paper? Um, I don't. Shelf paper doesn't really come in thicknesses. It's the thicker version. Oh, wide. How wide is it? It's an wide. inch. It's an inch wide. It's an inch wide. That does yeah. not look Well, like that's it. my shelf paper. The kit ah, shelf paper the is an shelf inch. The kit shelf paper is an inch wide. Is an inch wide. So and you get an inch, 20 feet of an inch wide right. shelf paper. Pretty cool. Okay. Ah, which is pretty darn cool. And then you can make so many shapes. Is the kiln paper reusable? Uh, the kiln paper is not reusable, unfortunately. Let me show you what it, it looks oh, like. Oh, it kind of turns into like chalky. Yeah, so this is what it looks like after you fire it. Um, if you sad. do want it, to, if you do want to do more than one shape, and you can use a sh uh, fiber paper that's one thirty second of an inch thick, oh. um, and it's not terribly expensive. You can use that more than one time. So um, <laughs> if you are looking to do that yes so in this wonderful kit you get patterns the two different thicknesses of uh, stainless steel ribbon which is super cool so you can do a variety of things and variety is a fun word so you know it's going to be great <laughs> and you get the shelf paper so you can do 20 feet worth 20 feet's worth of feet of fancy fun things right molds yes. molds trying not to injure myself. <laughs> I'm not wearing gloves. My skin is at risk. And it's tender and young. <laughs> Easily right. wounded. So in this kit, you get patterns, you get uh, the materials. It's pretty darn cool. The only thing we're not supplying is, is not grass, glass, because we know you all have your own little hordes. Don't try and pretend <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and you can use them to make custom ornaments, custom fun things. You can shape them into, what can you shape it into? Anything? 
snowflakes, stars, circles, squares. And don't forget, now we, you can also do circles inside of squares. <gasps> wow. Or circles inside of circles. Squares or inside of circles. Flowers, you right? You can do any kind of thing. Ooh. So, and then once you have your piece done, like, so once you have this piece, which is all well and good, but what do you do with it now, oh, right? Oh, you can slump it into other fun things. You chips. can. And then you have a gorgeous little jewelry bowl or soap dish or something. What would you put in it? Little knickknacks mm -hmm. and But you could things. also, but wait. Oh, wait, <gasps> there's more. You could also, like this big blue flower, I think I'm actually gonna put that on a panel, like we made in our, our uh, display class. Maybe Ooh. a circle. Ooh, maybe a piece of mirror. Ooh, that would be Wouldn't great. that be cool? A circle mirror. Anyway, speaking so you can also do class. wall mount. Yeah, you can. Oh. Speaking of your display class, this wonderful lady, Jody McCrane Vasho, is teaching a class next week on CuriousMondo.org. But huh? not displays. We're teaching. But not displays. You're teaching painting. Painting on recycled glass. Painting is so fun. It is fun. All right, and one last reminder that we're doing a giveaway. And it's the final one. So we have this, this, yay, this. It's so pretty, it's so cool. <laughs> and you know so what? Nice. We'll we'll send you a piece of fiber paper with it, so yeah. you can. Yeah. Look, you have yeah another mold to go. Ooh. There you go. Super snazzy. Awesome. And then guest 689 asks, can you tell us the firing schedule? Oh, yes. That will be in there. It's in the kit. Yay! Um, it is a tack fusing schedule. Um, and yes, it is right in the kit. It will be printed on the, on the same sheet as your patterns. So you can easily just... And I'll tell you, I actually have that same schedule tacked tack fuse tacked ha 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 <laughs> next to my kiln in my shop. I have all of them so I can remember which program is which schedule when I'm Yay. firing things. It's actually really quite handy. So yes, the firing schedule. Now, um, the firing schedule is of course for window and bottle glass. If you're using art glass, you wanna use your manufacturer's recommended tax schedule. Woo! So. Yes, we Okay. Can. Well, I, I just, you know, I don't wanna interrupt the important oh, announcements. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. No, one or the question, or the jokes. Or the jokes. Yeah. Or the jokes. Okay. Bree says, Jody, can you cut the shelf paper with a paper cutter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Paper cutter. Yeah, I would think so. I've just been cutting it with a yardstick and a so razor knife. But yeah, oh, you can totally, I think you could use a paper cutter for it. <laughs> that had not occurred to me, Bree. That's brilliant. Yay. Yay. Bree. So let's talk about some things to remember when you're making big molds. Big boys. Big boys, because um, this is really fun, and it has um, a lot of potential Vicky uses. says, you always get me thinking, Jody, going to Glass Shack soon. <laughs> and then oh, the Katie says, fun idea. Is Glass Shack the glass store? That's an awesome name. The Glass, glass Shack, shack. <laughs> right? Now I'm going to have Love Shack stuck in my head for days. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks Vicki. Thanks Vicki. So some things to remember when you're making big molds. Um, um, I'm trying to think of what's the most important thing. Probably the very most important thing is to make sure that all of your folds are perfectly at right angles um, to your to your ribbon. So if yeah. you're having trouble with that, then you can always like line it up against a straight edge like this and draw the line across it um, mm -hmm. with a permanent marker and then bend your, can oh. I have your pen? This is your pen. I know, can I have my pen? Mm -hmm. My super cool pen. I bought that. I know, so <laughs> this way then you make, can make sure that all of your folds are vertical. If they are not vertical, you're going to get it's a twist. Get yeah, you'll get a twist and then your glass will leak out under the bottom or and so this way you can easily um, line up your pliers. I, I like to use needle nose pliers, but it is hard to make a right angle because they're triangle shaped. So it's hard to make sure that the one edge is straight. So it does help if you um, make a mark on your your paper. The other th or your your ribbon. The other thing is to check often. So check and make sure 
how it is like if it's level if you need to do a little bit of a twist to it you can right because it's fairly flexible so you have a lot of uh, freedom literally wiggle room <laughs> freedom <laughs> yeah tina asks have to try an anchor That's yes a cool idea. oh oh did you see she's wearing a little anchor i'm wearing necklace. my anchor necklace thank you tina okay and yes but if you're going to use do the anchor use the thinner um ribbon this is the three quarter inch and it will be a little bit harder to bend uh, so do that the other thing that you can do with the thicker ribbon which is in the bigger pieces which is kind of cool is if you double up your fiber if you double up your shelf paper so you have two layers you can actually really stack your glass really thick like almost Ooh. even up to an inch and a half because it will lose volume as it uh, tack fuses down so, so if you yeah so then you can get a nice really thick piece now you can also use these for fusing so if you do want a not just tack fusing but full fusing so if you want to do a solid flower shape you can you can just do the exact same thing but uh, fire to a full fuse instead of to a tack fuse hmm. and and you're set That's cool. right okay so that is everything I have. Do we have any glass questions or any jokes? Any I've only managed to guess one joke so far today. To guess one. <laughs> Unfortunate. Everyone, you should send in your questions real fast because oh, we're running out of time. We are running out of time. Here, I'm okay. Stick this right here. Because okay. The most important part of the show. Because I forget and keep talking and talking and talking and. <laughs> Talking. Talking. Sharon sends in, I have just finished a GOG glass on glass. Oh. Stained glass, including tempered glass. Love it. Uh -huh. Oh, fun. Was that, okay. yes, I saw pictures of a, a recent class that was very cool. Okay. So you could make custom shapes for um, your stained glass if you wanted to. Okay. So now, who was it that said that, that we could use our, I think it was Sheila, we could use our rubbish uh, cookie cutter yep. like a pattern, and now I'm curious how hard that would be. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, we have a couple it. more minutes. Yeah, one, one minute. Okay. Paige asks, Jody, when you full fuse tempered glass, do you still get the ice-like texture or does it smooth out? Um, okay, both. You do still get the ice-like texture, but it does smooth out. So what it, it turns out more like actual glacier ice. Huh? So more... Um, lumpy? Not lumpy, but you see the, uh, you see like ghost... Ghost <sighs> crystals. No, it's almost like you can see where all of the individual outlines of the individual pieces are. So even though oh. you have a thick slab of glass, you still get like, just like ice. Like it looks like almost like you can see the cracks in ice and they're not cracks. It's just the, um, when they, it fuses together, you see that the broken edge of the glass leaves just the faintest halo and it doesn't fuse as clear as, um, as sheet float glass it does have a slight opaqueness to it and i'm not sure if that's like a devit issue or because it goes all the way through it's not a surface thing or if it's just a something that happens with the tempered glass so but i do cast with it quite a bit and it is um just definitely castable so you can definitely use that. Awesome. But when I'm casting, I use the bigger chunk uh, tempered, not the small chunk, just because it's easier to get a hold of, I find. And if you're having trouble finding tempered glass, head on over to, if you have in your area, um, one of these, uh, there's a lot of, I guess they're kind of like thrift stores for building materials, right, where you get old shower doors or this kind yeah. of thing. Paige says, so faucets are lines between the pieces, but no space? No space, no space. yeah, awesome. absolutely. So it does go absolutely solid um, if, you, if you cook it long enough, but you do still see sort of this halo uh, look inside the glass. Uh, Judy Phillips says, please show the metal joint again. Sure. 
there's two different kinds of joints. So we have two different kinds of expansion joints. And, and we have the, the first is this the fold over type. And I'm, I'm just going to, I don't know what to call it. So it's going to be a fold over type. <laughs> And that's where we make a ha we fold over half an inch on one side and make. A, do you want to show a close up or? Sure. Okay. Here, try to. Okay. Be very, very careful. <laughs> so we have this. You can see the. Right. So you can see the folded bit. The a fold and tab. Is this called fold a, and tab? a tab and fold or and fold something tab. like that? And then this is the other kind of expansion joint, and this is um, I don't I don't know what to call this one either. If you can show another that, tab and fold. yeah, another tab and fold. But this one is a low profile, ha ha, low profile. Low profile. So tab what? And fold. It's a strip that wraps around the back and folds over. Let's see if we can on the inside. And yeah, it, you can kind of see that. Yeah, and so. I use both of them, and they both work really well. If you're doing an inside piece, though, like this one right here. Um, the low profile works better. The low profile works better, right. Uh, Katie Mason says, where can you find the tempered glass? I came late to the video, so you may have said it earlier. No, I didn't, actually. Huh? So tempered glass, I end up getting a lot of it just donated to me because people want to get rid of it, but they don't know what to do with it. So um, tempered glass comes in different thicknesses. We did look at those, the different thicknesses. I don't know if you were here for that. Um, we, so quarter inch, eighth inch, and three eighths. And three eighths inch is typically um, tabletops or like gigantic commercial picture windows. We have a table. Is is it thicker than that? It's this thick. Oh, oh no, our living room table is living much table. thicker. It's, yeah, it's ours is three quarters of an inch. It's very thick. Um, it's going to live in my living room until my house falls down. It's so heavy. Yeah. So this is typically a tabletop. Um, I often see those for free on my local. Um, like Vintage want channel. ads or whatever, right? Yeah. And usually I'll, if I email the person and say, hey, I'll come take your tabletop, I give them like a, an ornament or something as a thank you. Ooh, look, pretty thing. Right, and then the quarter inch is um, very typically what you'll get is shelves or those glass display cubes nice. that have the, <laughs> I'm, I'm standing in front of the hourglass. <laughs> The glass. Oh, oh wow! Right? We're out of time. The glass. This is the last question. The glass display cubes that have the little corner metal brackets. All sides of those are um, tempered, and they often get scratched. So people will want new ones, and they'll be happy to donate those to you. <laughs> the eighth-inch ones are things like uh, windows. In the U.S., any window that is within 18 inches of a door has to be tempered. Um, and screen doors. So that's from a screen door. Yes, I'm aware. Okay, I'm being told that I need to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. Okay, I guess we're out of time. Okay, so okay. we're going to talk about this kit one okay. last time. And the winner for the giveaway <laughs> is guest 689. Send um, your address to us at info at mondomarket.com. And we will get that shipped right Mondo to Market TV .com? Mondo Market TV dot com. Mondo Okay. Yes. And we'll ship. We'll get that. Yep. Okay. We'll get that shipped too. Perfect. Awesome. So this fantastic kit. It's at a sale price, forty nine dollars plus shipping mm -hmm. for the next twenty four hours. If you do, you want to grab it and or yeah, let's. Ooh. Or there, oh yeah, see, there it is. Woo, Yay. beautiful. So, so the one with the yellow zip tie is the half inch, and the one with the orange zip tie is the three quarter inch. Mm -hmm. And then the, the little spool of white you see back there, that is the 20 feet of, uh, oh. of shelf paper. Shelf paper. That's one inch awesome. wide. Awesome. So, yes. get right, right on that. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. We have so much fun with this show, and it's all because of you, our viewers. <laughs>